There is a lot of stuff that I need to talk about in this video regarding what we saw on Friday and this week and what it could mean for going into next week. The first thing I want to start with is whether you trade currencies, commodities, futures, indices, whatever you trade, this was a very interesting week because what we saw was a major shift to bullishness on risky assets. And not just the S&P 500, we'll look at some currency pairs and other things here in this video. So I invite you to make sure that you subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and let's look at some charts. Okay, so the S&P 500, if we go to a daily chart, look at this, you guys. That is what we are talking about. And if you guys were here for my uh, video last week at the same time, I talked about how I thought we could very likely after that candle of last week with the Friday close could go into a strong week to uh, this week. And of course, I'm patting myself on the back here a little bit, but we were correct about that. Um, now, to be fair, I've been wrong in the past, so I'm not going to try and act like I know it all the time. But I will say this. We got the bullish move that we needed. And a lot of people are going to say, you know, this is a bear market rally and sell this because it's coming right back down. And perhaps it does. And that's still a risk that's on the table. But what I really liked about the confidence going into the end of the week is that we sold, we did not sell off towards the end of Friday. In fact, right up to the close, look at this candle. We saw nothing but green on the day. And that's really confident because what that tells you is retail traders, investors, institutional traders, whoever, it seems like they were happy to hold for the weekend, okay? And that is big because if you know that they're willing to hold for the weekend, a lot of times we've seen, especially recently, we've seen Friday sell-offs as the market does not want to hold on to the bag going into the weekend due to the possibility of gaps and you know changes and all that sort of stuff. We got a really strong Friday close. And to me, what that signals is still bullishness ahead. Um, and for whatever reason, you know, there's a lot of bearish uh, thought processes out there. Um, I will say one, one red flag is that we did not necessarily clear this level. We broke out of resistance big time, which was a big sign for the bulls. Like I said, we were able to basically clear this level, which was a pretty key spot of resistance. Now it acts as support. <clears throat> so going into the week ahead, where are we headed? In terms of next levels of resistance and where we could potentially spike higher to, I'm watching this area here. To give you a price level that is around 4300 on the dot, that would be our next checkpoint and to see if we can get up there this coming week. That would be very, very bullish for the S&P, for the NAS, for, the, uh, for the, the Dow, whatever you're trading, right? So going into the price action a little bit closer, look at the hourly candle. And you can see, like I said, this week, this week, we got it. We got the move that we were looking for. There was this bottom, and then we saw consistent higher lows. And each time tr uh, sellers tried to get a hold of this market, the bulls pushed through key levels of resistance with strength. So to me, until further notice, we are in a bullish trend. Doesn't necessarily mean we're going all the way back to the top, but for me, pullback opportunities are buys. They are not sells. A lot of people are going to say, you know, hey, sell this rally before it... Um, you know, rolls back over and, and perhaps it does. Perhaps I'm silly to think that we uh, could see more upside. But I think that this market has really seen a crazy move. And let me show you guys one more interesting thing if you're looking at the S&P 500. When we saw this previous rally, let's look at this. This was a move of from the bottom to the top of this swing, about 11%. That happened in the course of 15 days. Uh, so if the exact same move were to happen, we could copy and paste this over here and say from the lows, we still have some room to go up, right? If it were to uh, another exact rally in a downward trend, if we were to get a strong rally continuation, especially with a Friday close like that, I don't think it's out of the question to see 4,300 as a next wave target, just going off that. From there, yeah, you may want to look to take some profits. You may want to look to uh, get out of the move, et cetera, et cetera. Now, how do we compare this to currency trading, commodities trading, et cetera? Um, that is a great question, and I'm glad that you asked. So let's go look at what happened this week. The euro dollar got a little bit of a bid. The dollar itself came down real, real hard. And this is the daily chart. So we're seeing some higher time frame sell-offs, which really show uh, a bit of a fade to the downside, right? We're seeing that down or that upward pressure lose its, its, it's a bit lackluster now. Now, where we could go with the dollar, if you start doing a similar analysis, uh, it's possible that we could see 
the dollar continued to fall, uh, I would say until you start getting around to the 100 psychological level. The first one was 101, which lines up right here, but really it's this entire zone I think we're probably due to head back to retest next week. And again, more dollar uh, downside with the stock market rallying um, could give you some trading ideas. If you're looking at, for example, some of the more aggressive ones like NZDUSD, perhaps you're looking for some intraday. Now that we've found seemingly a bottom here on the daily chart, maybe you'd take a look down at the one hour chart and you're looking for pullback plays, right? You've got this area here. You could start marking up your chart for possible scenarios in which you could get long. Uh, that's one pair to look at. But I wanted to show you some examples as well. Let's take a look at the edge finder. And this, you guys, was a big one for me going into today because, uh, or going into next week, because look what popped up here. Three very specific currency pairs. The Euro Yen, the Swiss Yen, the Pound Yen, the S&P, this, is risk on and i like to see it because that backs our analysis that we just did on the s p 500. Um, the edge finder by the way this is our proprietary market scanner that we use to find trading setups and when stuff pops to the top of this list it's rating it as a potential buy and what i love about this is that the yen pairs are being considered sells sorry the euro yen is a buy, but the yen itself is being considered a sell because we're buying the pound, buying, uh, selling the yen, buying the Swiss franc, selling the yen, buying the euro, selling the yen. And then, of course, the S&P 500 also falls under that buy category. Now, we could break this out and feel free to pause the video if you would like, but you can look at all the different categories that the edge finder is essentially using to make these decisions. Uh, but you have things like uh, the bank positioning, right, by using uh, the COT data or retail sentiment to see what the crowd is doing and get a bias from that. Seasonality, right? The trend, the GDP growth, the inflation, unemployment, interest rate. Based on those metrics, we get a summation of these four pairs coming up to the top of the list, which I think is very, very, very peculiar going into next week. And these will be my top pairs to look at for the coming week. So, with that said, that's just extra confirmation. When we break this down, for example, the one that I'm most interested in personally is pound yen. Look at this. Actually, let's look at euro yen because it actually is a better example. If we go look at euro yen, which is very similar to pound yen, and it's saying, okay, we should be looking more for the buy side. Now, let me pull up the chart while we're up here and we'll take a look at this. So euro yen, right? If we're being, uh, we're, we're considering uh, possible buys on euro yen, Let's look exactly why that is. If we look at the COT data, which falls, let me get this better color here. What this is saying is that the yen, from an institutional positioning standpoint, 90% of, of institutional positioning is short, where only about 10% is long. So that's telling us not so interested in the yen. And the euro has a much healthier 50% or 52% long rated. So that gives us a bias to the upside, giving us a plus one in that category on the edge finder. Next, we look at retail sentiment, and this is pretty simple. Basically, we see that the crowd is short. Okay, that leans towards the long side because we know that the crowd tends to lose money. Okay, continuing on, seasonality, the month of May is very positive. Now, granted, the month of June is negative, so that uh, is probably going to lose that in a couple of days here going into the next week. The trend reading is, of course, very strong. We see the moving averages kind of uh, converging to the upside now. GDP growth, very, um, very favorable to the euro. As we see uh, in terms of GDP growth, the euro area is growing. The Japanese uh, area is not growing. In fact, it's shrinking. So you put that, okay, bias towards the euro. Uh, inflation does favor the yen as it tends to due to the fact that the yen uh, the Japanese uh, inflation is much lower due to their slower growing economy. Um, unemployment is another one. Of course, the unemployment is favorable here towards uh, the yen as it also has 2.6 compared to 6.8. But those are the only two ones that work against us. You finally have interest rate divergence, a slight bias towards the euro. And you put all those things together and you say, okay, that gives us a buy rating on euro yen. We then go look at euro yen and there is some correlation here to the stock market. Again, bottoming out, finding support, and rallying off of the lows. So it, going into next week, if you're looking at the Euro Yen, big spot to me would be to isolate this area and say, if we can break above that, there's a good chance we could see continuation plays looking long on the Euro Yen with the idea of perhaps being of targets at the previous high, 
that makes a lot of sense. You also have structure here, right? So you could be potentially looking for something like this, where you, uh, let's get this tool going, something like this, right? Where you uh, risk small relatively, you're looking for a tighter stop, something like this, break, retest, continuation. And then perhaps if we see real bullishness come in, like real, real strong risk on sentiment follow through, we could even potentially target the previous high. And that gives you, in my opinion, some really good risk to reward for the Euro Yen. And it is one that I'm looking at. You can see very consistent. You might you might make the argument, you know, you could you could say, well, what if it breaks the downside? That might be a different story. But for me, the trade that's most interesting would be follow through to the upside, pullbacks and continuation plays on Euro Yen, the S&P 500, the pound yen, much the same story, which we don't have time to do all of those in one video, uh, but yeah. Just a little bit of a bonus material. You can see I'm going to have to brag for a second. My stock market account was up very much this week, which was really nice. Um, this, uh, of course, the last few months has not been very good, but you can see several days in there where we were up several, several thousands of dollars, which is, of course, great when it's happening. But full transparency, there's also been some really ugly down days recently, down 8,000 one day, down 7,000. So yeah, just part of the, the trading and investing journey. But I figured that might be interesting to some of you guys to take a look at the old uh, stock portfolio. By the way, you guys, if you'd like the Edge Finder, this is our tool. We're doing a big sale on it. There will be a link down below in the description. If you'd like to get a copy, click it, use the promo code, and get a copy of the A1 Edge Finder, which is, again, our proprietary trading tool that uh, might be helpful to you to check out. So link will be in the description. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.